Therapeutic Hypothermia by Ashley Towers and Michelle Mackinnon. What are you doing, Ashley? I'm watching this video by UCLA Health System about therapeutic hypothermia. Wow, sounds really interesting. It Can is. I take a look? 21-year-old Jay Eam is recovering at Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center after collapsing in full cardiac arrest while running the recent L.A. Marathon. Jay was rushed to Ronald Reagan UCLA Medical Center, where fate again intervened. UCLA is one of only a handful of hospitals equipped with a sophisticated thermocooling device that doctors could employ to again his life. Most people who have cardiac arrest out in the field, as we say, on the street, don't survive most the catheter comes in here and so this is a machine it's a it's a cooling instrument which consists of a catheter that goes into the blood vessel and it's a uh, catheter that basically circulates cold fluid inside of this uh, blood vein and that allows you to cool the blood like a radiator cools a car wait what's therapeutic hypothermia what is therapeutic hypothermia Therapeutic hypothermia is lowering the core body temperature to under 32 to 34 degrees Celsius in order to reduce the risk of ischemic injury. Why use therapeutic hypothermia? Therapeutic hypothermia improves neurological outcome, reduces ischemic injury, and decreases the severity of reperfusion injury. Who is a candidate for therapeutic hypothermia? An unconscious patient who suffered from ventricular fibrillation or ventricular tachycardia cardiac arrest with rapid return of spontaneous circulation is hemodynamically stable and unresponsive. There are various non-invasive cooling techniques including cooling blankets, hydrogel coated cooling pads, ice packs, and immersion in cold water. Invasive methods can be used as well. Some examples include intraventricular cerebral hypothermia, extracorporeal circulating cooled blood, infusion of IV fluids, and peritoneal lavage with cold exchanges. When rewarming the patient, be sure to rewarm slowly at a rate between 0.5 and 1 degree Celsius per hour. Use heating air blankets and treat hypotension with IV fluid. We have a big responsibility when caring for patients undergoing therapeutic hypothermia. One is the prevention of shivering. The nurse needs to administer sedatives and paralytic agents. Both should be discontinued as soon as possible after the completion of the induced hypothermia treatment. Vital signs are also very important to monitor. Bradycardia may be seen as sedatives and paralytics prevent normal body response to cooling. Prolonged QT intervals may be seen during the cooling process, even several weeks later, so the nurse needs to continuously monitor EKG strips. Temperature must be measured using either an esophageal thermometer, bladder catheter, or pulmonary artery catheter. Axillary and oral temperatures are not specific enough. Skin care is also important, considering the patient will have severe peripheral vasoconstriction. The nurse needs to pay extra attention to their skin assessment, skin care, and patient repositioning. Fluid and lab value monitoring is also really important. Electrolyte shifts may occur, especially potassium, magnesium, phosphorus, and calcium. Levels need to be monitored and replaced if necessary. Platelet counts may also decrease. Frozen platelets should only be given if patient is experiencing adverse effects. As with any patient, prevention of infection is key as well. There's a high risk of infection and sepsis due to the decrease of white blood cells. Nurse needs to, as always, wash hands frequently and use sterile technique when handling catheters. The risk of developing ventilator-associated pneumonia is also very high, so the nurse should follow the hospital's ventilator bundle guidelines. Thank you. Thanks.